Welcome to this segment of the Entertainment Answer. I am Matt Mungle, talking this time around about a new film premiering on video on demand everywhere November the 7th. It's called Girls on Film, written and directed by Robin Bain, starring Dare Taylor and Willow Gray. The film fearlessly explores the complexities of desire, power, toxic relationships. Thought-provoking and exhilarating, it's an intimate, compelling, and daring look at the transformative impact of encounters that shape our lives forever. We're excited to be joined by Robin, Dare, and Willow on this segment to talk about Girls on Film. Hi. Good morning. (laughs) Hey, gang. How's it going? (laughs) Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. I guess we can call this girls on Zoom now. This could be like this. this <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> when did you guys rap on this? Gosh, uh, I think we did our last was- pickup in November, December last year. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it has yeah. been. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, since I edited the film, I really just took a lot of time to really find the moments and find the performances. And so I think I probably was the holdup once we completely wrapped i mean i would take days on one scene so and just really look for all those little looks and and the best takes and and it's a lot of work we had a lot of footage and just putting the whole thing together so yeah it was a lot (laughs) yeah um, absolutely you know, and, and I don't have that ability to be a writer or a director. I, I know many of them, our middle daughter wants to direct and she's done a lot of editing. And mm-hmm. I seem like to me, though, if I wrote something, I don't know if I would trust anybody else to direct and edit. Is that sort of how you feel? I mean, it's like, or, or is it hard to turn those things over and trust somebody else's creative juices? Or do you like doing it all yourself? Or is it just, I just got to do it myself? Well. Um no, that's I, basically the last two. I like doing everything myself. And um, I think it would be hard if I was really emotionally attached to the material to turn it over to somebody else. Uh, I think if someone hired me to write something and I knew from the start that I wasn't going to direct it, I could probably detach. But mostly everything I write, I envision doing myself. And I think it would be really hard to let it go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, watching the trailer, cause you know, we get, we get tons of stuff in and I just try to, you know, just try to watch something and say, okay, this is something I'm going to, I want to cover or talk about. And I watched the trailer and it kind of gave me sort of that neon demon, black swan, single white female vibe about it. Uh-huh. And I was like, this is really in- intriguing. I was so curious about the direction that you were going to go and and how this was going to uh, to pan out. Uh, Robin, for you creating this, what was the kind of inspiration and the catalyst of what drew you to it? Was it was it the characters? Was it the social media aspect? Was it the dynamic relationships? What was the I guess the the nugget that kind of started it all for you? I think for me, uh, initially, it was the idea of a toxic relationship between two people, sort of regardless of their gender and just a character study of human behavior and um, power and control and and the consequences of that toxic behavior. And then I thought that the uh, social media element, um, the online webcamming and things like that is kind of an interesting world to sort of tap into. And um, I, I think, you know, the, it was, it just sort of all started to meld together once I started writing. Yeah. And, and as I'm watching this, the first word that came to my mind is of what the, the set dynamic would be, would be trust. And, and, and Willow, for you, and especially Dare, there had to be an element of trust of trusting Robin enough to be vulnerable And to be willing to give her everything that she's demanding your character give her. What were some of the discussions that you had beforehand? Were you and Robin able to sit down and talk about that before shooting? And what kind of gave you that sense of trust that I can go where I need to go with this character? Absolutely. The whole thing is just having open communication throughout. So it's not even just like like beforehand going over like, okay, this is what's expected of you. It's having that like level of comfortability where you could like, you have that freedom before, during, after a scene when you're like, okay, what, like, can you guide me through this? Um, just how far can I go? What are you like hoping to see? What is this like specifically like based off of from your perspective and just like having that like understanding and also like it's Robin's amazing and she's 
female too, which is plays a huge part in it. And just that, that level of like, okay, this is like really sensitive material. And it's also like dealing specifically with a lot of like struggles that females in general have. So it's not like I'm going to someone who wouldn't understand. I'm like, Hey, I want to portray this correctly and I want to do it to the best of my ability. And can you just like, like she'll be honest with me and just be like, okay, let's do like a few different takes. There's just a lot of environment. And I think that just like made the entire environment just feel really safe. Like it's a very intimate, like Kyle, it's just like, it just becomes more of like a family in a lot of ways. And it's, you guys are all show up to do the best you can every day. Yeah. And so that between being able to just like, you could talk about anything goes a long way. And again, with it being really sensitive material, I think that's just kind of necessary in order to feel like you can get into it and like feel okay being able to like truly live in it as well. Yeah. And, and I guess you and, and Dare sort of had to have the same conversation and the same trust with each other too. Did you have yeah. that same feeling that you were just talking described with Robin? Was that sort of your dynamic with her as well? Absolutely. Like another thing with her is just like having mutual respect too. Cause like, um, we both never played similar like roles to this before. So we were going into it just from like kind of the same angle. And it was like, okay, let's like talk about it. It's not awkward. We're professional. We're doing our jobs and like, we need to like truly live this and know that like, we can't, you can't just have commit. That's like so obvious <laughs> in right. like any like relationship or anything. Like you have to, like, I respect her boundary. She respects mine. It's just about talking, being like, okay, how did this make you feel? Or is it okay if I do this? So there's no like surprises. There's like no awkwardness in any way. Um, but it's just kind of necessary for like anyone you're interacting with cast or crew to have that communication. Otherwise it's really obvious if you don't on screen. <laughs> right. Yeah. You, you lose that organic nature of it. If there is, if there isn't that just relatability and, yeah. and everything that we see. And, and so it, it did, it looked like the, the vibe that you y'all had together, that it was comfortable, that it wasn't like, Oh, this, this isn't working. So it helps the viewer to kind of engage in that as well. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so Robin trusting them, was it a collaboration where, okay, this is the script. We got to stick to this. Or did you guys have some improv moments where you're like, Hey, yeah, this take actually worked better than, than what I had planned. And how did y'all talk through those dynamics? Um, well, first, let me just let you know, Dare just texted. She'll be right on. She said okay, cool. in five minutes. Um, yeah. But um, I like people to, I like to stick to the script. But that having been said, I did trust Darren Willow so much and they really committed. And if there were moments where they felt like they wanted to, you know, push it one way or the other, I absolutely am always open to actors um, and especially these two kind of just living in that moment because once they live in that moment it becomes real and I think that is something that we really accomplished in this movie there are so many like really real moments and that is a testament to them just living and and I guess me letting them live and not cutting them off and putting them in a box right yeah and and again I think that kind of came out in the film uh, that collaborate collaborative effort yeah well there we were just talking um we're in the middle of talking about just the set dynamic and, and the trust factor between you and willow and then you and willow and robin uh can you talk a little bit about from from your aspect of going into this project after reading the script knowing what your character was about uh the the level of trust that you needed to sign on eventually and say yeah this is something i want to do was was that part of your decision making uh, for me, this wasn't a big, it wasn't a big like, oh, am I going to be able to do this or am I not? We as actors kind of have to set sometimes ourselves apart from the character and we have to realize that we're going to be in uncomfortable situations. And especially with this script, with the dark tones of it and how much Willow and I had to trust each other. Luckily, right at the chemistry read, Robin did a really good job of telling us that like she was our intimacy coordinator as well as our director and she had our back and she asked us flat out, like, how comfortable are you with nudity? What if it's implied? And 
I think just her asking and being so open and honest and being a woman really helped me just know that stepping onto the set that I would be in a safe space where I could trust everyone. So I I don't feel like there was ever a moment where I felt out of control or uncomfortable because she had already eliminated the discomfort and like, oh, these scenes are going to be difficult. Just communicate with me if there's anything that you disagree with or you're not comfortable with. So thankfully, Robin made it a really great experience that we all had a really good time and didn't have any discomfort. Awesome. And I'm glad you bring that up because I got to admit, as a guy anymore, I don't know what's right to ask and what I can't ask anymore. (laughs) I just don't know. So I just sometimes just keep my mouth shut. But does it bring a different (laughs) dynamic if this had been a male written and directed, would that change your perspective at all? Having Robin there and as a strong female creative, does that change the whole dynamic of everything that this film would have brought? I feel like yes and no. Um, To me personally, I actually didn't know the director right away was a woman until I walked into the chemistry read because it was uh, on the breakdown said Leslin films. And I wasn't sure that could be male or female. It's, you know, it could be anyone. Mm -hmm. So walking into the callback, I had an idea in my mind that like, this could be a a male or female. And that didn't bother me then. Um, But as soon as I saw Robin sitting there, I was like, Oh, this is great. Like it, it added a little bit of uh, comfort to it because I even remember in my audition, Robin, for some reason, we really hit it off. Like we were really vibing in that audition. And I remember mm-hmm. telling me about how she came to Hollywood and how she got started as an actress and that she was put in like similar situations where, you know, she had to do some darker scenes and she flat out was like, you know, I, I don't want it to be that. I don't want this to feel porny or too, too much about the physicality. I want the story to stand out. So I, it's hard for me to say that if it would have been different, if it were a guy or a male presence, just because I, I don't know. And <laughs> I think it would depend on what the male would say during that audition and the comfort, like the comfort that he could provide in those situations. So I, I guess it just depends on which male, because it, it really has nothing to do with gender. Essentially, it was mm-hmm. her taking the time to connect and taking the time to say that we were in good hands. Yeah. Hopefully that. that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Another aspect of the story that I appreciated, uh, especially now because I've I've been in this this industry for so long and watched the evolution and the paradigm shift of what, what is really important. And with the social media aspect and where we are today in the world of social media and what that means, is there a pressure because I felt that I felt this in your character, Dara, but for, for you, even personal or any of you, the, the pressure to stay relevant in a world of social media where everything changes every day. How do you navigate those waters of just not letting it overwhelm you when you're like, OK, what have I got to do today that to stay relevant in what I'm doing? I feel like the best way to stay relevant, essentially, is just being open and honest And not trying to be something that you totally aren't. Um, I feel like you prove a good point. And even my character talks about like how she posts daily and how she's like live streaming almost like essentially every night that she's there and trying to be out there and wants a million followers. It's a big joke in the script that she says, like, I do need a million. And And now Dare has a million. And now I do, (laughs) which is funny. (laughs) I, I feel like it's, it's so easy to get swept up in those and the, the being relevant and the, the constantly posting and the constantly being on the forefront of people's minds. But for me personally, and I, I want to say Jenna would be the same. My character would be the same that it was never essentially about staying relevant and an attention. Like I need this constant attention. It's more about, I never had someone in my corner growing up. Like I didn't have a parent that really supported me and like really believed in everything I did, even though I had like dreams that were bigger than I could ever imagine. And I always wanted to create a space online, a community that if 
they were going through something similar. They didn't have parents that supported what they did or just even would show up to their recitals or whatever, like whatever they have gone through in their life. They had a place to kind of come to and be like, oh, Dare commented on my video today and that made my day. Or like, oh, Dare was live streaming and talked about this topic and it, it made me feel seen. And that's more in the vein of how I go about content creating is I look at the piece of content and go, what is the message of this? And what is somebody who doesn't know me going to get from this? And if I feel like it's, well, it's just a thirst trap, then maybe I I won't post it. Or maybe I will some days because I just want to look nice and (laughs) look good. (laughs) But mainly it's about the impact. And that's basically the reason my character is a nurse is the impact. She saw how her mom was treated by all these nurses and that's why she wants to be a nurse. And I like to thoroughly believe she's in the same with her content creation and and being online and connecting with people. Um, Like if you see the live streaming scene, she shouts out the names of the guys or the, the viewers. And that to me is like going the extra mile so that they feel like they're seen. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. And Robin, as a filmmaker, do you kind of feel that as well from like even writing and I don't know what next projects you've worked on or since you've wrapped this one, if you're working on anything else, but even the writing element of staying relevant, is that you feel that from time to time? Oh, for sure. I always, you know, you definitely want to try to stay current. And so, you know, I, I feed my brain with YouTube and Instagram and whatever I can to just kind of stay to know what's relevant. Because I'm not as active as Darren Willow on social media. And I, so I, I have to kind of just be a voyeur to, to know what's happening. Cause you definitely don't want to be a decade behind. Right. Right. Welcome to my world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's where I land. Um, now, Willow, Darren, Darren kind of referenced the fact that there's some dark tones in this film. And there are, especially your character kind of brings this. Uh, menacing sort of uh, essence to it. But at the same time, there had to be light moments that we don't see. W- was, it, was it hard at times because of your friendships together and, and, and on set to, to stay dark and menacing, even in the light of this was probably cracking me up kind of a moment? Were there any of those that you can recall? I love playing dark and menacing, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just like, it's just so much fun. Again, it's like what Dara was saying before about like having like, it's still like separate from you and it's a different, like you're playing a character. And so you need to be able to distinguish that. And I say like, I'm not an angry person or anything like that. So being able to just like, when the camera turns on, be that person, it doesn't affect like how I feel or treat dare off camera in any way. I'll definitely say like there is sensitive material and having to get into that headspace, especially like really emotional ones is different from just like the casual snarkiness. Um, but from the day to day, I was like, it, it's pretty easy to turn it off and on for that. <laughs> gotcha. Well, as we mentioned, it hits video on demand as we're recording this tomorrow on the 7th. It's going to be available everywhere for people to get. What do you hope, and maybe this is different for each one of you, who, who do you think is going to be drawn to this? And what do you hope people take from it other than just this just really in fun little thriller to watch of not knowing the twists and turns that are taking place? What else do you hope that's maybe deeper that they will take away from this? Hmm. Who wants to start with that one? Oh, no, right. you, we're all like, uh, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I, I always turn to dare. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. No worries. Um, gosh, I really want people essentially when they see, when they're casually scrolling and they're like, gosh, what do I want to watch tonight? And what kind of journey do I want to go on? They're going to see that, that little thumbnail of us two in this luxurious room on the couch. And they're going to be like, Oh, this interesting, interesting title. And you know, I I feel like they're going to go into it with the perception. Oh, it's going to be about two hot girls. Cool. You know, maybe they'll, they'll watch it. But my hope is that past the poster and past the fact that it's two women on this poster is that they can take a sense of humility and can watch it and learn about the intricacies of people that not every bad person is a bad person. A lot of times it has to do with the traumas that they went through and how they navigated them. And I hope that they can see a little bit of themselves in both of our characters because yes, they are so different, but they also 
are very similar. Just in the traumas that they had to face, they connect over their mothers, right? And they both dealt with that trauma differently. And so maybe instead of just going into it being like, oh, it's a movie about two hot girls, you know, being together, they may start that way. But by the middle of the film, I hope that they can open up and realize and look past the generalizations and see a little bit of themselves in these two characters and also just have a little bit of humility towards other people. Very good. That's pretty great. And and I, and I can say I was lucky enough to be raised around so many strong women that I love that you brought that to the film that, you know, we can't always just look at somebody and go and judge why they're doing what they're doing. And, and what their life is until you've actually lived it. And so I could appreciate that, that this is coming from a very strong female writer, director and very strong female performances. I think we need more of that in cinema. And uh, I applaud all of you for, for, for doing that and taking the time to do Thank that. You. So, Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And I appreciate that you recognize that. And um, I think that the performances do really obviously carry the film and um if I could say I want an audience to take away anything, it'd be like just the, the idea that you're not alone, that everybody has problems. You could be living in a big mansion and be beautiful and, and have issues that no one knows about just kind of like what dare just said. And you can look like this beautiful pinup like dare, but still have issues that you're dealing with in your, your life. And, and not everything on social media is what it always looks because for sure, most people just post, you know, the beautiful moments. So yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, sorry. I wasn't trying to, no, 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 go ahead. Same, same thing. It's just that, um, you could someone could seem like they have it all or have something that like you've been striving for for so long but you've no idea what their life is like behind closed doors everyone has a story and most times a lot of people don't share a lot of it because it's not always that great and so just like coming to every table knowing that you've no idea what someone has or is going through and that they probably do have a reason for acting that the way they do good or bad it's important. And as Jay was saying, just like, I really like to just take some like humility from it and know that, um, and the cliche, like don't judge a book by its cover for anyone. Yeah. Most yeah. Even. We're yeah, all if we, human. Yeah. If yeah. we can all just be yeah. real every day, <laughs> it's just, just all real. <laughs> That's all it takes. Yeah. Well, again, congratulations. I wish you the best on it again, hitting, uh, Thank on you. November the 7th and uh, appreciate your time today. All three of you. I know you're busy, so uh, we don't take it for granted that you joined us and I uh, wish you the best of it. Thanks, Matt. Thank you so much. And thank you, ladies. Take care. Again, a very special thanks to Robin, Dare, and Willow for joining us on this segment of the Entertainment Answer to talk about their new film, Girls on Film, premiering on video demand everywhere November the 7th. Be sure and check that out for sure. Everything that we do, theentertainmentanswer.com. We will be back with more right after this.